Sarah, when you're in an ad, do you voice an opinion on the ad? Or do yes. you just do... Oh, you do? Always. Do they welcome that opinion? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, I know better than they do. That is the truth. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm experienced, and I need to help them sometimes. Mm. The grammar is often bad. Um, <laughs> oh, she really doesn't want to listen to my songs. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> we'll I get do. notes. We'll get notes later. Because <laughs> Miriam, you were the voice of a period, weren't you? A menstrual period. A yes. menstrual period. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and as an actress, how did you find that voice? <laughs> well. <laughs> You always go to the text first. Yes. And the text was, uh, you didn't expect to find me on your holidays. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I thought, so well... <laughs> <laughs> that's got that to be a, a naughty schoolgirl. So <clears throat> I, I went, um... <laughs> you didn't expect to find me on your holidays, did you? <laughs> <laughs> What were you selling? Sanitary towels, something. It, it was, um, it was for a sanitary protection. Yes, Lovely. for sanitary protection. Yeah. yeah. Sales went up, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. I, I have actually got a menstrual story for you, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go, well, Mary did Margulies. I, I, did I tell you uh, last time about when I did an audition for Crossroads? No, I don't right. think so. Well, <laughs> For those of you who, who may remember, Crossroads was a, uh, a, um, a soap opera yeah. uh, which took place in Birmingham, and I went for the, uh, for the audition. And um, I'm pouring this all over myself, it's rather exciting. And um, <laughs> as I was waiting for my turn to, to, do the, to do the audition, my period started. And I thought... Period! <laughs> 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 Don't, don't you call it that? No, I just thought I'm well, on the rag. This is on the rag. Very right in between. Yes. This. How you doing, Dominic? Doing okay. Yeah. Doing okay. Yeah. All, all good there? We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Really comfortable. Okay. So. Be brave. You don't want to talk about periods. No, I do. Be I don't brave. Like it's, it's all right. It's all okay. right. So, so meanwhile, back in Birmingham, Miriam yes. just had her period. So. I went to the ladies' room, and in those days, there was a, a long box on the wall, Dr Southall sanitary towels, and you put in two, <laughs> two pennies and pulled the little drawer and got out the carton. Am I right? You remember all this, some of you. And, um, People applauding. So, oh, yes! <laughs> so, I put in my 2P, pulled out the little drawer, and it snapped back with my finger in it. <laughs> so, it was really painful. It tore a great gash in my finger, which was ex so sore, bleeding all over the place. I managed to pull open the drawer and extract my finger. I rushed into the loo and fixed myself up, came out again and went in and started to read for the audition. And I noticed that the script was covered in blood. And the people I was auditioning for noticed it too. And they l looked at and I, I saw them looking. And I said, oh, I, I'm so sorry. You see, my period started... <laughs> Job. Yeah. I did actually. You got the job! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is 31st studio album. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. And what's great is listening to these songs, it's you and Bernie Taupin sort of at the top of your game. Well, I, it's the most piano oriented record I've ever made. And it's a very simple album. Um, and I don't really see the point of making a record if you don't try and make it better. Um, I've been making records since 1969. I made a lot of records, um, and this one is one of my favourites um, because I think we've come a step further. I'm singing better, I'm playing better. It's a very relaxed album, and so I'm very happy with it. And, you know, I'm sure Judy would say that she goes into every part hoping to make a better performance than the last one. There's no point in carrying on otherwise, um, just for the sake of it. I mean, they want to... The record company, who are here tonight, assholes. Um... <laughs> I mean that. 
They're a very good record, aren't they? But they, you know, it's been, su it's it's been it's suggested. It's shows when you're a star, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You're a proper star, can call a record company an arsehole. Well, <laughs> they wanted me to make Christmas albums and, you know, <laughs> cover albums, Motown records, but that is so silly, you know. Uh, I'll leave that to Rod Stewart and people like that. <laughs> Did I say that? Uh, <laughs> yes, you Having did. said that, his album's doing much better than mine. <laughs> Assholes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Ministry of Defence, th and th this is uh, this is down to you because obviously you have a particular fan base. The Ministry of Defence, <laughs> they've released the latest bunch of X Files featuring uh, various sightings oh by members of the public. So they heard uh, you were on the show. Uh, they were very keen to help. So. Uh, how did the Ministry of Defence <laughs> here? What Can't department of Ministry of Defence goes? You'll never guess who's on Norton. <laughs> no, we rang them. Oh, you rang them. So we rang them. They, they, they didn't hear them. No, because they've got they've got the <laughs> they've volunteered no, this any, information. Anyone go, anyone go on the website and they've got the newly released UFO files. But uh, presumably they just wanted people to be aware of some of these people. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now some of this is very very frightening. I'll warn you now. Uh, <laughs> A Plymouth woman reported a sighting that occurred when she went downstairs in the night to refill the hot water bottles. <laughs> As you do. Do you, though? You fill them, you're warm, you go to sleep. You wake up, they're cold, but now you're warm in bed, you kick them out. You don't refill them. The problem is that hot water bottles just aren't as good as they were, Graham. I mean, they, you know... <laughs> I blame the moon landing. It's, it's, they, they've got all the research money into the wrong place. That's what's happened. Now, this poor woman in Plymouth is being pilloried by you because of the moon landing. Anyway... Thank God he's here. I know, the, the report said... <laughs> the report said she saw a brownie orange object over her house. <laughs> now, she also drew a picture. Are you ready? Here's the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you think a brown object heading towards the house? That's just the kids from the estate throwing shit at her window. <laughs> it's the mad woman refilling yeah. the bottles. Yeah. So. <laughs> it does make you think when you look at this, why are these objects always seen by people who can't draw? <laughs> like, here's a UFO as spotted near uh, Breadsol Hilltop in Derby. <laughs> <laughs> That's just somebody's pants, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but my favourite alien one is this one uh, sighted in uh, West London. <laughs> <laughs> half alien, half banana. <laughs> <laughs> but now, this is extraordinary. This is uh, a letter from these top secret files. Now, uh, where is it? Now, I can show you. That's the, the actual writing of, of the letter. But uh, this letter... Whoa, we don't have any names for these people, right? So, uh, Dear sirs, your first reaction to this letter will be one of full disbelief. However, let me assure you, <laughs> I am neither insane or a charlatan, <laughs> as the facts will prove. <laughs> and if you've got to put that in the first line of a letter, <laughs> chances are you're insane and a charlatan. <laughs> there you go. Now, it starts off, well, it starts off mad, but sane enough. During World War II, as I'm sure you're aware, a crashed UFO was recovered by the military somewhere in this country. I should like to know the exact date and location of this event. Fair enough, OK? <laughs> you know, I don't know this stuff. Maybe a UFO landed that, you know, everybody knows about, but she, doesn't know, she wants to know where it landed. Right? It is possible this was Pussy Lock Warren. Uh, <laughs> right, this, that's what we think, Pussy Lock Warren. Uh, the location of which, as yet unable to discover, there are several options. Uh, Wistman's Wood by West Dart Devon, between Garrow Point and Blackstone Point Devon. The Norfolk Coast or Wenlock Edge. In fact, the name Pussy Lock Warren could be quite wrong. It just came into my mind one morning from whence I know not. <laughs> It's like, you know, you're going to be your Tom Tom for a long time. <laughs> with just names you've made up. <laughs> I want to go to Pussy Lock Warren. <laughs> now, the thing is, why does she want to know? Well, here we know that. The crashed vehicle contained two males from Spectra, a planet orbiting the star Zeta Tucane, and a female from one of the two inhabited planets in the Sirius system, Aragon, the planet of warrior women. You think, how does she know so much about it? <laughs> <laughs>
the female was me. <laughs> so I have a right to ask my question. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will now acquaint you with some of my story in brief. I am aware of Purple, a top rank in the military. Some years ago, our president, Dastra, asked me to come to work with the, blah, 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 to check out what was going on. I was very familiar with Earth. <laughs> In fairness, she does do quite a good drawing of all the people. Now, we don't know her name, obviously. This is a picture she, she, uh, she drew of herself. Gillian, <laughs> well, you, you didn't send this letter, did you? Because this woman looks spookily like you, I think. And the person sitting next to me... ...is Rosamund Pike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. In, in my baby grow. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you been married for? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, exactly how long. <laughs> exact dates, please. <laughs> You're supposed to be the poster child for marriage. How long have you been married? 20, oh. uh, uh, <laughs> it was December 23rd, 1961. So we'll be <clears throat> 47 years in December. Whoa, that deserves a round of applause. He just keeps telling himself, it's only a movie. <laughs> now, she's my trophy wife. And Do you keep her on I, a shelf? I, no. I, <laughs> uh, she, she, she keeps me honest, seriously. And she's, she's always been more mature and brighter than me, and so I've, I've been smart enough to listen to her. How do you keep the romance going? Well, it's not, it, it just, you know, you get older, you know, you change, your idea of romance changes so a little bit. you don't bother, bit. that's what you're saying. No, no, we, <laughs> you bother. I'm delighted to say we bother, but uh, the ideal kind of uh, way to go into a marriage is that you'll promise that person that you will help them become themselves at all costs. So you will tell the, them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth all the time. And most of the time, you'll be the only person that will. And there's another level to it as well. People talk about happiness and there's so, oh, I'm happy as Larry, or he makes me happy, she made this, may, but they rarely talk about joy. And that's the thing that transcends the whole relationship is the element of joy and, and realizing that with gratitude and praise, the other person has allowed you to experience joy. I, and that's I think different. I'm safe to say that's the most profound thing anyone's ever said on this show. <laughs> uh, I'm still a bit stuck on the be completely honest with them at all times thing. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still, like, stuck on that rapid while you've oh, sailed on down the yeah. river going, I don't, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> <laughs>